All right, welcome back to Academics One, Tatiana. You may have noticed we have a, a guest with us this evening. Uh, guest, would you would you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Rod Parker. I am Jonathan's father. Um, and other than that, uh, daunting task. Um, I was also a high school English teacher for 32 years. Uh, so I'm just recently retired, living the glorious life of retirement during a pandemic. So it's very nice to meet you, Tatiana. And you have, what, what are your credentials? Tell her about your degrees so she doesn't just think I oh, pulled you okay. out of, a, <laughs> out of okay. your chair. Uh, well, all right. I, I have a, well, for, I have a high school diploma. Um <laughs> I have a bachelor's in English uh, with a teacher certification. I have a master's degree in English, and I have a master's degree in educational administration. So, Tatiana, I didn't just pull him out of his lounge chair downstairs to come do this. He's qualified, uniquely qualified, uh, to give you maybe some some more advice in, in reading and comprehension strategies and the things we've been working on. I've given it to you a couple different ways. We've tried it in writing. Uh, you and me talking, you know, I just was talking at you and, and you took notes on what I said and told me the main points were trying. I'm trying a lot of different ways to try to drive these points home to you. So I thought, you know, maybe tonight she's sick of hearing from me. We'll bring a, a guest on a very qualified guest, I might add, uh, to add his own unique perspective. So, yeah, and I'm and I'm free. And he's free, cheap, too, and he doesn't charge me. And expensive. Don't ask much. Your reward will be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to move over here, Dad. And this okay. is uh, Eisenhower's farewell address part of it. It's kind of uh, maybe a little, little bit more, ch just a tad more challenging. Uh, we've read some stuff maybe but at a higher level like this, but... Uh, I was wondering how you would go about uh, pulling the, the the main points. You know, uh, what telling me what the main idea is. Okay. Well, um, should I read it to you? No, it's okay. Does do you want to do so for Tatiana? I mean, I I can see it. It yeah, maybe so, a, maybe that would be a good idea. Okay. My fellow Americans, three days from now, after half a century in the service of our country, I shall lay down the responsibilities of office as, in the traditional and solemn ceremony, the authority of the presidency is vested in my successor. This evening, I come to you with a message of leave-taking and farewell, and to share a few final thoughts with you, my countrymen. Like every other citizen, I wish the new president and all who will labor with him Godspeed. I pray that the coming years will be blessed with peace and prosperity for all. Our people expect their president and the Congress to find essential agreement on issues of great moment, the wise resolution of which will better shape the future of the nation. My own relations with the Congress, which we began on a remote and tenuous basis when long ago a member of the Senate appointed me to West Point, have since ranged to the intimate during the war and immediate post-war and finally to the mutually interdependent during these past eight years. In this final relationship, the Congress and the administration have, on most vital issues, cooperated well to serve the national good rather than mere partisanship, and so have assured that the business of the nation shall go forward. So my official relationship with the Congress ends in a feeling on my part of gratitude that we have been able to do so much together. Now, this goes on for a few more pages, but for the purposes of this video and the fact that it's only a two-hour class, we're just going to stop there. It okay. was the end of the section anyway. So All right. talk us through how, how you would approach this. Well, um, in terms of summarize, summarizing. Well, I would look at it and try to break it down into parts is the first thing that I would do. You know, so um, if you take a look at it, at the first um, three parts, you know, paragraphs, sentences, whatever, uh, that he has up there are basically just why he's 
talking tonight, you know, that he's leaving the presidency uh, after 50 years of service. And and um, I think it's interesting, you know, you read the little subtext with this stuff and and I, I he's tooting his own horn here quite a bit, but that's OK. <laughs> He was the guy He's, responsible for, for the D-Day invasion. He can toot his own horn. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. That's fine. But, uh, you know, he wanted everybody to understand that he has served his country for 50 years. And he's now stepping down. Yes. So, uh, and handing over his authority to the new president. Um, and he just wanted to say goodbye. And he just wants to uh, wish the new president... And the people who work with him, uh, good luck. You know, so just to break down those first three parts, I mean, so that first half of the the, uh, the speech there, that's up on the thing, is basically just here's why I'm giving this speech. I know. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So, so that's that's all it is. So you just break it down into parts. Then you look at that. Now he's going to start talking about. Um, Congress. Okay. Uh, and he starts off by saying that they, c the people of America expect the president and the Congress to work together for the betterment of America. Right. So, and then he says that he's had a very, very long relationship with Congress when it started with a Senator who had appointed him to West Point, you know? Um, and then it became intimate during the war and immediate post-war period. And then, you know, so it was started off with, they did something for him and then he was doing something for them. And now they're doing it together for the last eight years. They've been working together. So one isn't, you know, it started off as here's something the Congress did for me. And then I was doing something for Congress. And now for the last eight years, we've been working together. Does that make sense? To me, it does. So, okay. You, how might you put that just in a sentence? Um, I would say um, Eisenhower in summing up his relationship with Congress points out or establishes the three phases of their relationship. Which I mean, if you wanted to, you could put a colon after relationship and, and put it uh, before the war, during the war, and after the war. Or how about what? during his presidency? All right, there you go. Okay. Good. And then, and then the third part of it is just simply he's saying that um, he explains that he thinks that they've cooperated pretty well together that on most issues uh, that were important, they made decisions uh, so that the nation could go forward. It wasn't just on party lines. All right, let's try this. Take number three, Dad. So the, okay. the, we had a few interruptions, Tatiana. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, the nation uh, you know, benefited from Eisenhower's and Congress's relationship together. They they built uh, a relationship together so that they could move forward. And it wasn't a partisan relationship in any way. Well, he, he, he did say that on, on those important issues on most vital Fine. issues, he didn't say that they agreed on everything, I beg your but part. on You're the right. vital important issues they had, they made decisions that were bipartisan, you know, so, um, and he, and then he just, the second part of that is just him expressing gratitude towards them for their relationship and the, and for the time that they spent working together.
so Tatiana, what I what I was telling you, what I was you know um, what I was trying to drive home here, this what I've I've written down here does tell me a little something about what the piece is about. So Eisenhower is leaving the presidency after 50 years of service and handing over his authority to the new president. Eisenhower, in summing up his relationship with Congress, really establishes three parts of the relationship before, during, and after World War II, before, during, and during World War II, and during his presidency. And they've been able to reach bipartisan decisions on important issues, and he thanks them for their decent relationship. And that really sums up what's in here. We pulled the main ideas from this part of this speech and really uh, can put this into three sentences. Yeah. And, and that's what you're really trying to do is you're just trying to, you take a look at the paragraph. And if you take a look at most paragraphs, you'll notice that they're really just three parts. Each paragraph is three right. parts. You have the intro, the body, and the conclusion. Okay. Uh, the intro sometimes can take a couple sentences to, to, you know, to get them going into it, but that's where you're going to find out what they're going to talk about. Here's what they're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about grapefruit. You know, that'll be mentioned in the introduction somewhere. And then in the body, it's going to tell you what about the grapefruit they're going to talk about. You know, what particular issue concerning grapefruit is being addressed here. And then the conclusion uh, just really kind of sums it up in a way. So a lot of times you can just take a look quickly at the intro and the, and the, the body of the paragraph, and that's going to give you all the information that you need. Because the conclusion, for the most part, with most people, is either summing up the paragraph or introducing us to the next paragraph. Right. You know, so, um, but just, it's much easier if you just take the paragraph, break it up into parts, realize that there's th basically just three parts to every paragraph. Okay. What are they, what are they going to talk about? What are they talking and what about that thing are they talking about? And then how do they end it? Right. Right. And, and that's all, it's very simple. You just have to train your mind to start looking at paragraphs. It's a skill. Way. It's a skill, and we will continue yeah, to work it's a on skill. developing that skill. But again, I, and this is the most important point, I think, you know, the, the summary has to tell me what the piece was about. Yes. There has to be enough in there to cue me in on what I might have missed. So I don't, I didn't Absolutely. read the thing, but I know that Eisenhower had I mean, I did read the piece many, I've read it many times, but <laughs> I do, you know, but I do know that Eisenhower thinks that he and Congress had a decent relationship, you know, and I get that from the summary we did. And he says so in the speech. So I hope this, I hope exactly. this was, this was more helpful uh, to you. We will continue to work on this. And I think, uh, dad, you're going to stick around. We're going to do some poetry in a minute. Oh, uh, that's okay. correct. So. We'll be right back. <laughs>